Hey, welcome back to The Dive. Today on the show, we have the CEO of Versus Technologies, Gabriel Rene. He's here today to talk about chat GPT impacting jobs, the areas of AI where he sees the most opportunity for investors, the world's first general intelligent assistant, the company's new partnership, financing, and what investors should watch out for near term with Versus Technologies. Hey, Gabe, welcome back to The Dive. Thank you so much for joining us today. Hi, Cassandra. Great to be back. Okay, so Gabe, let's start off with ChatGPT, a free chatbot that's become widely popular. How big of a game changer is this technology and what types of jobs do you think will be impacted the most? Well, I guess the easiest way to say this is that over the last, let's say, 50 years of computing, there's always been the main thing that we interact with through the computer. So in the PC era, it was programs we downloaded to our computer and we interacted with those. Um, that's kind of where the logic of the application exists. Then in the World Wide Web era, we interact with websites and that's where the sort of main action is. When we move into the smartphone era, it becomes about apps. And so we all start using apps. And ironically, you know, apps kind of bundle the capabilities of websites. Um, and websites are bundled the capability and network those of programs. AI is the new application. And, but instead of us having to do the work, it's doing the work. So the kinds of industries that it's going to impact are every industry that interacts with computers in a way where we're trying to get some sort of output from the computer. So you can imagine with chat GPT, it's certainly anyone that copyrights, right? Whether you're trying to you know, draft the in marketing information for a brochure or for a website or for an email. Um, it's, it's already disrupting education as we see, you know, kids using it for essays. So you know, education system is going to have to, to shift. Um, it's, it's changing the way uh, researchers uh, research uh, their work. Uh, and that's just on the text side. Additionally, you have others like Dolly and mid journey and that does do, do imagery. So you have, you know, give it, a, give it an idea. Hey, give me a panda on a skateboard, you know, wearing Ray-Ban sunglasses. And in two minutes, it'll generate a high quality image or painting, um, that looks like something you would pay tens of thousands of dollars for, for someone to do a graphic designer and would, would take a month or something. And it, it's done in, in minutes. There's ones being, you know, generating music and there's ones generating a video now. You know, some point in the next decade, we're going to have some 12 year old kid who, uh, you know, is the new Steven Spielberg and essentially make something equivalent looking to the last avatar movie by themselves with one of these AIs. So, you know, the creative industries, the administrative industries, legal accounting, everything is in a position now to be disrupted. Now, what that means in terms of labor is a huge question. In some cases, it'll be that these are kind of power tools and those that use those power tools are going to be the ones that don't. But in the long term, it's, I think it's genuinely reasonable to, to ask the question, you know, how is this going to impact labor in general and the economy? Andreessen Horowitz said that this should disrupt all everything from beginning with all of software to all of human activity, because you can even extend this into, you know, giving robots instructions on how to perform. So I think this, this larger AI wave is going to be much bigger than the last wave of, of how applications grew in the smartphone, you know, markets grown to billions of people within 15 years. So this is the biggest wave in technology history. And I think it's actually going to change everything. If you're thinking about it as an investor, what areas of AI do you think are the most interesting or where do you see the most opportunity emerging? Well, you know, when these new markets emerge, there's a lot of churn. And there's a lot of activity that happens um, in different areas of the stack. Um, and so what you really want to figure out is how can you find the companies that are, that are building infrastructure? Because those that are kind of building single one-off applications or capabilities, they're going to be fighting a, a pretty rough fight with a lot of competition because the capabilities are so democratized, which means that, yes, you can get to market quickly, but the moats also disappear very fast as well. Now, the infrastructure layer is is something that will continue to power everything. I mean, even just the cloud hosting providers are going to win no matter what. Um, but when you look at companies like Versus, we're designing infrastructure that allows 
third parties and uh, basically users to develop their own AI and their own AI applications. This is a much uh, safer sort of bet in terms of where you want to find your positioning in the market. Now, Versus recently announced the world's first general intelligent agent, codenamed Gia, an AI-based personal assistant. Can you tell our viewers what Gia does and why this is significant? Well, we're slating for a summer launch for Gia. We've been building Gia for a little while here in the background. And, you know, Gia is the, let's say, the culmination of the goals that I think companies had for virtual uh, assistants like Siri and Alexa and Google Now. But we, we've watched those all sort of largely fail us over the last 10 years. You know, you can't really ask a follow-up question. They don't seem to be able to, you know, maintain the memory of the topic. They're, they're, they're really just sort of voice activated search and only within a single ecosystem. So Alexa will work on Amazon devices, Siri will work on Apple devices, Google will work on Google devices, but we live in a world now of many devices, right? You have different laptops and handhelds and tablets and smartphones, but you also have, you know, smart locks and you might have a smart car and you've got smart temperature, you know, so smart home devices. And, and this is just going to increase and increase. So now we live in a kind of network of devices. And what you want to be able to do is have something that can interact with those devices uh, and that you can access and reach across all those different devices that can maintain memory is is learning about you. The chat GPT knows about the world and it's read everything on the public web, but it doesn't know anything about you. So Gia learns your information. You, you, know, you give access to your files, your data. Imagine being able to ask the question, hey, when was the last time so-and-so messaged me and what was the message? Because right now when it happens, you're like, was it an email? Was it WhatsApp? Was it Slack? Was it iMessage? Was it like, you know, and so the, the ability for us to interact and interface with computers uh, as humans, it uh, turns out we're really bad at it. And what Gia does is becomes the ultimate interface to the digital world, your digital world. So whether that's all of your files, all of your information, all of your emails, all of your notes, um, uh, you know, uh, you could start to, yeah, as an investor say, hey, read uh, all of these profiles on, on the different companies that I've invested in my portfolio. And then you could just ask questions. What was their quarterly earnings report from last year? Why don't you go read their, their website and let me know if they, any new products have come up, go analyze their competitors' website. So imagine the smartest sort of virtual assistant that you could, that you can talk to and text with across any set of devices that can both, uh, essentially provide you answers, recommendations and perform tasks for you. It can order you that, you know, that Chinese chicken salad from Mendocino Farms through DoorDash. It can book you the car through Uber. It can basically update your reservation on hotels.com and see that your flight is late when you're flying into LA for lunch and let whoever you're meeting know that you're gonna be late and can you meet for dinner instead and even go book that reservation through Resi or one of these other services. So instead of humans interacting with apps, websites and devices, Gia is basically here to do that for you. We're curious to know what's the story behind Gia and how did you come up with the name? Um, so in uh, we started Versus in 2018 um, with this idea of how do you integrate the next generation of technologies and what, what's called Internet of Things or set of all the connected devices in our world from you know, smart rings and smart watches to smart toasters and refrigerators to smart cars and robots and drones. That is the internet of things. All of that interaction needs to be powered by AI. So artificial intelligence is the kind of the center of the whole thing. And then the interfaces around this for humans, you know, are going to additionally end up being smart glasses and virtual reality headsets. We start talking and gesturing, you know, instead of typing and swiping. And this is a sort of evolution of what we consider to be web 3.0. So we wrote a book in 2019 called The Spatial Web, uh, how Web 3.0 will connect humans, machines, and AIs to transform the world. And we outlined this whole narrative. In that book, we talk about a near future, which is now increasingly getting closer, that essentially outlines this idea that everyone will have a personal uh, artificial intelligence and that knows and knows you, that you control, that, that you uh, essentially have as work uh, something that works on your behalf. 
um, that then facilitates all these interactions with technology and is able to filter the constant information and notifications kind of coming at you. So the, the bombardment of information in the web 2.0 era really shifts the web 3.0 era three, because everything becomes personalized. And so personalized artificial intelligence is, is peak AI. That's, that's, that's pretty cool. Um, when we started working with professor Carl Friston, uh, and the neuroscience, um, sort of computational neuroscience team that we put together over the last couple of years, we started to understand that there were additional capabilities and new classes of artificial intelligence that, that essentially are based on this thing called active inference. So, which is how do you, how, how do you get software agents to sort of understand the world and then be able to update their understanding in real time, cor correct their understanding, if you will, by connecting these ingredients together, um, we were able to create a type of agent that can model the world, um, learn about you and then update its understanding and update you and your world and your life in real time. So the idea of this being a general agent and an intelligent agent in, in, in IA rather than an artificial intelligence, which felt like this is fine that you're talking about statistics growing into AI, but we're talking about how do you take the concepts of neuroscience and bi biology and how biological intelligence works and putting that into software. So we don't, we don't prefer the term artificial intelligence to describe our agents. We, we prefer intelligent agents. So that's an IA. In this case, GIA is one that is a general intelligent agent. And so GIA is just a sort of acronym for general intelligent agent. Okay, now you also announced a partnership with SVT Robotics, a platform that streamlines the integration and deployment of robotics. Can you walk us through how the partnership works and what does this mean for Versus? Well, yeah, this is an exciting uh, set of news here because SVT is um, kind of the squeeze point in the global supply chain for robotics companies and software companies to be able to interact in, say, warehouses and manufacturing environments. And what they do is they make it easy for these um, facilities, these large companies or corporations, that want to deploy robots into their uh, facilities, they make it really easy. They've got a platform where the integration part, which is usually quite costly and takes a long time, they've been able to lower that barrier. <clears throat> they have a standardized approach to doing that. And now in the partnership with us and SVT means that our Wayfinder capabilities, the ability to intelligently route humans through warehouses, which, which we've been doing here for a while, so AI augmented humans, now can apply to AI augmented intelligent routing for all of the robots that run on the SVT system. So all of the clients and customers that we're talking to, their clients and customers in their network can now apply our intelligent navigation and routing to the robotic systems that they already have and or the ones that they're about to purchase. And so it just lowers that, that friction to deployment where then the gains that they can get from having AI augmentation intelligently telling the robots where to go, which actually is not something the robots know how to do. They, they have a very specific sort of fixed route that they might learn to take, but it's not intelligently adaptive to the whole environment or whatever orders happen to be coming in that day. And so our Wayfinder agent is able to do that. This lowers that barrier to deployment and basically streamlines the path to robotic adoption within the supply chain of our technology. You announced a financing with total gross proceeds of over $5 million. Where do you intend to use these funds? Well, like most of our funds, uh, we really spend most of the money on people. You know, software development is our is our bag. That's our that's our main focus. And so, developing intelligent software requires hiring intelligent people. So we try to hire the best people that we can, and that's allowed us to, we think, leapfrog the um, the markets in terms of the type of capabilities we can roll out. So predominantly, the money is being spent on product development. Okay, so one more thing before we let you go here, Gabe. What should investors look out for with Versus over the near term? Well, I think the the G announcement last week was a a bit of an historical announcement. No one has ever released a general intelligent agent. Um, this is sort of a signpost of um, what is commonly called artificial general intelligence. So. Most of these AIs, the ones we talked about earlier, they kind of do one thing. They're like a hammer or a wrench or a screwdriver. So ChatGPT will give you text, but it doesn't give you anything else. So they kind of have a narrow capability set for most of these. 
Um, and they required training on lots and lots of big data to extract enough examples to be able to learn. Gia isn't built like this. Gia learns like how the way that we learn. It has an explicit understanding of the world because we're actually able to teach it information as opposed to training and on millions of examples. The result of this is that as we start to roll this capability out um, this summer, um, I think that we're going to see really significant adoption by everyday users, not just large enterprises and corporations. And so this sort of consumer facing capability, now you've got, unlike ChatGPT, something that can learn on your information and data, be useful for your your life, your your in your personal day to day sort of activities, and help you optimize those. Um, you know, be able to do research and and perform tasks and activities for you relative to anything in sort of your digital life. Uh, and even beyond that, it can access the web, which ChatGPT can't do, and it knows real time information that might be coming in from you know other devices and other sources. So it knows that hey you've left the house and so maybe I can turn the heater off while you're gone because I can tell that you're gone and start to like, you know, is not only improve your your life, but improve your, you know, your savings. So I think this is a very significant announcement. There will be the enterprise uh, sort of equivalent of this as well, which will be coming soon. And um, and then there'll be some some other announcements converting some of the, the pilots that we've been working on with some of the big uh, Fortune 500s and other multi-billion dollar companies that that are looking to deploy its capabilities as well. So a lot of exciting news to come over the, the course of the next couple uh, quarters here and and at the really the most exciting time in the beginning of this next wave of uh, technology. I think that the, the markets are already inspired and we hope to be one of the leaders as the, uh, the shakeout happens here. Okay, sounds great. Well, uh, thank you so much for coming on today, Gabe, and sharing your story with us. Thank you, Cassandra. Bye-bye. To our audience at home, thank you so much for tuning in today. We will be back again tomorrow and you're not going to want to miss it. So be sure to hit that notification bell and subscribe below so you don't miss out. Bye.